Now this weekend and into next week is really important for Bitcoin. It needs to confirm above this level right here. It hasn't confirmed yet. It got above, can it confirm? Hello everyone, Gareth Soloway reveals his institutional level analysis on the traditional and Bitcoin markets. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. Bitcoin is in the initial stages of a bull run and a $100,000 BTC price may come within three months. In his latest market analysis on October 24, network economist Timothy Peterson said that ignition has already come for a new Bitcoin BTC $68,286 bull market. Bitcoin has spent nearly eight months consolidating after its all-time high of $73,800 in March. For Peterson, however, the real gains are yet to come and may even see BTC slash USD hit six figures for the first time in the next three months. Bitchin's current run is not meaningfully different than prior price paths. So let's just jump right into Bitcoin here and take a look at the Bitcoin action. All right, we'll go back to the chart here, folks, and take a look. And what we see on the chart of Bitcoin here is that, again, we did exactly what we talked about. We came back into this little mini scene of the crime right there, and so far we've had a big bounce. Now, this weekend and into next week is really important for Bitcoin. It needs to confirm above this level right here. It hasn't confirmed yet. It got above. Can it confirm? If it can confirm, then you got to think 74,000, a test of the all-time highs, is next on Bitcoin. Again, as I say, my only concern for Bitcoin, and I'm a mid to long-term bull on Bitcoin, my only concern is the stock market. And if you're a hardcore crypto person, that kind of sucks because it's like, I mean, why do we have to be influenced if it's Bitcoin? If you believe in Bitcoin, it's like, oh, well, it should be something that, again, is 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 universally a, a, almost a digital gold. It's a safety play. It's something that, again, 21 million. But in essence, you have these ETFs that were launched that got a lot of retail, non-hardcore crypto players in, and they are influenced by fear and greed. So if the stock market sells, they dump their ETF, whether it's the uh, the iShares or whatever, or the other BlackRock ETF, whatever it is, and then BlackRock has to sell Bitcoin because they're dumping it, right? But essentially, BlackRock has to do whatever happens with the ETF. If it sells, if it sells off, they have to dump it. If it rallies, they buy more Bitcoin. So just monitor that. And again, uh, you know, it's not the best thing in the world for a hardcore crypto person to want to follow the stock market necessarily. But in this case. We kind of do have to, and we showed, I showed over the last couple of days how Bitcoin was down this day right here. Bit, uh, the stock market was getting crushed. Then the stock market began to bounce. Bitcoin bounced right up. Yesterday, stock market was up. We'll see what Bitcoin does today with the stock market up early in the day. All right, on to gold, guys. Gold today is holding up relatively, well, it's pulling back a little bit, but it's not too crazy of a pullback here. Um, in fact, it's rallied off the lows. Just taking a look, folks, we have a channel that I'm monitoring on a technical basis. We have these high levels right here. Every time it seems to touch this line, it gets rejected. The key that I'm watching, and this is something that I don't necessarily know, no one really knows, is you know the resistance. What you don't know is how big of a pullback you're going to get. So is, is it just going to be kind of a shallow one like it was over here before new highs? Or is it going to be a bigger one going into this level or below? And that's really what we're all waiting to find out. We know the resistance line. The resistance line has been proven here to here to here to here all the way back even below that. We just don't know the size of the pullback. The one thing I will say is the miners really took a trouncing yesterday because of Newmont Mining. Newmont Mining essentially announced that their earnings, and their earnings were not the greatest. They didn't miss by a ton, but it was their costs. Costs are going up quite substantially, and that's one of the worst things to be seen for one of these stocks or any of these companies is if their costs are rising, then even if gold's price rise, they're not going to make more money. Now, if gold price keeps rising, 
well, then they're going to make more money because eventually their costs aren't going to go up exponentially. If gold just keeps going up, they're going to make a lot of money. So something like Newmont Mining, I actually think is a very intriguing buying opportunity on such a big dip that it saw yesterday. And it is trading down just a little bit in the pre-market. In fact, we can take a look at that chart real quick here. Look at the drop on Newmont today, or this was yesterday. It's trading down just a little bit. On In these scenarios, I love to use my fibs. And what we could see here is right around 48, which is where it's trading pre-market, there's a 382 FIB retrace. That should be very significant technical support on Newmont Mining. And again, if you're a longer-term bull on, the, on gold, then dips on Newmont Mining are buying opportunities. Uh, silver, real quick, let's take a look at silver here. And silver, again, you know, kind of stalled out. If you looked at gold, gold bounced yesterday. Silver did not. It was flat. Today, gold is down slightly and silver is down. This is your technical support right here at around 32.50. If it breaks that, my buy level is still 29. And I fully am okay missing a trade. If it never comes back to 30.29, so be it. There's so many other trades for me to take as a swing trader. There's literally multiple every single day that the discipline, and I think this is key, is when an investor starts to realize that any one trade is not the last trade there will ever be on earth, then you're okay missing it. You have to use your discipline and say, make sure it comes to my level. And if it doesn't come to my level, I'll pass. And by the way, just because it comes to your level based on technical analysis, it doesn't mean it's going to be a slam dunk winner. All right, but it limits the amount of hardships you go through as a trader, which is really important, right? You want to be in as many as you can that generally are easy trades. They go right up, but always understanding there will be that one trade or two trades out of every 10 that get punished further, and that's where you do small starter positions so you can maneuver and dollar cost average, assuming you still like the chart. All right, let's look at oil real quick here as we go into oil. Uh, let's see what we have on this chart. Oil getting a small bounce again. It really just is chopping here, folks. The other thing, too, is maybe a little head and shoulder pattern right here. So, again, shoulder, head, and shoulder possibly. Either way, I see nothing at this time that is bullish on oil, and I still expect further downside in the near term, and a still a 2025 target price of, of $50 is on my radar at this point as well. Uh, lastly here, take a look. Nat gas continues to climb up. You will have a little resistance at double top. You could even draw a trend line from this high to right there. So once you get into this area, this is where I am going to look to potentially short it if it gets up there in a straight line. Uh, if it doesn't, then that's the discipline of the nature. I'll just miss it. No big deal. Uh, same thing down here. If it flushed majorly, this would be your technical level of support. All right. Other than that, again, just going back to a few stocks here. Apple remains stuck in kind of a little bit of a wedge pattern here. Uh, if it breaks out above this line in the near term, we have an upside target using this pivot to this pivot, and that would be at around $250. And then on NVIDIA, we have very clear attempt at a breakout, never confirmed, rejected, but let's see. I'm still in the camp. This might get one more push up to 150 before it really peters out, mimicking the major tops in Bitcoin and other major asset classes. Again, remember yesterday, yields came down, markets went up. Today, yields came down. Let's take a look and look at this. This is the SPY, S&P 500 in the pre-market, and this is where we closed yesterday, right? So if we look at where we closed yesterday, we closed here, and the S&P is up again. So this is what it is, folks. The markets are very concerned about rising rates. The Federal Reserve cuts 50 basis points, and the, the market or the 10-year yield actually goes up over 50 basis points. Go figure that one out. But the essence of it is is that the markets have had to reprice interest rates, ignoring the Fed. And I think that's really important to understand that the Fed, yeah, they have some control, but they do not have absolute control. And in this situation, we can clearly see that the economic data has been stronger than expected. That's pushed up yields. And the worry over the next president and lack of any sort of spending control has pushed yields up as well. Now with yields down today, remember when yields go down in the short term, markets will go up and that is what we are seeing today. So that's just the essence of it, folks. I'd love to make it more complex than that for you. Yeah, sure, does it have a little play on earnings? 
Yes, I mean, Tesla yesterday up 22%. Of course, that's going to influence the markets a little bit. But overall, it's all about interest rates right now. All right, let's get into a couple other key factors for the day. If we flip over to the daily chart, notice yesterday here, guys, the daily chart we did close two days below two days ago below the line here this wedge pattern wedge patterns remember upsloping wedges generally break to the downside even with yesterday's rally we did not get back within that that means the bias for this setup here guys this setup on the markets continues to have a negative bias to it that's even in spite of the markets trading higher today. Now, what would change my mind on this based on pure technicals and probability is any close back above this trend line would bring us back to a neutral to bias stance, uh, to bullish stance versus the bearish stance for a move down here. Notice again, folks, it's not like it's that big of a move down. Right? I mean, it's not like it's a huge drop. This, again, would just be the target price before you hit major. And I repeat, this is major technical support here at 565 on the SPY. All right, a couple other things to go over here. We do have some movers and shakers this morning. Um, WDC is a chip stock. It reported earnings yesterday after the bell. And again, they were solid earnings. And so that is going to generally help the chip stocks today go up just a little bit. Remember, WDC is not an AMD. It's not an NVIDIA. It's not a Taiwan semiconductor. So it's not to that extent, but it still is a player in the, in the sector. All right, so again, it will have an influence on that. And if we go to the daily chart here, one of the things we can see is, okay, so it's trading up pretty sizably. Again, currently trading at around $74.50. My first level of major resistance is this gap fill at 77.20. So 77.20 will be a major resistance point for a day trade. I stress day trade. I'm not looking at swing trades right now. This would be more of a day tradable level if it surges up there. And again, we'll cover that in the day trading Apex Live day trade trading room. All right, Apple today. Apple was initially flushing after word out of China said Huawei phones were essentially, um, you know, basically they were selling much better than the iPhone. So we did see on the chart here, we did see a pretty sharp move to the downside initially pre-market. But look, Apple's climbing all the way back up ignoring that as yields come in just a little bit. And lastly, I wanted to talk about this chart. So this is an amazing chart. In fact, I'm going to go to the big board here and discuss it. This is a chart of Microsoft. And the reason why I love to show these charts is because I want to show you how parallels really work. And it's not just one parallel here, this line to this line, but look at how it now behaves at the lower parallel line. So you can actually map out parallels below, 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 and oftentimes they will hold true. Now in this situation, we can see we had this longer term parallel on Microsoft, kind of in the upper ranges to the down, lower ranges, upper ranges here. It broke down and confirmed. Next, what do we see? Well, now this becomes resistance. And remember that, if you have a trend line and you're hammering on it, right? If you break down and confirm below that trend line of support, it now flips from support into resistance, right? So on the upside, that now becomes resistance like that, right? So that's very important. That concept is very important. And what you can see here is that's exactly what happened with Microsoft. It broke down, all right, came to a lower line here, up, then this was resistance, this and here. And you can see each time it hammers here. Now, next week, Microsoft will report earnings. What's going to be fascinating is does Microsoft go up on earnings and hit this line and get rejected? Or does it break down again on the chart? Thank you for watching the interview highlights of Gareth Soloway. If you enjoy this highlight video, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.